All right, kids, how are we doing today? So we are back over at the farm. Um, we're gonna do a little deep, deeper dive into the pigs today. So we're gonna give you a little walk through, just show you all the pigs, um, our plans for them, what we're doing with them, plans for the future when it comes to this pen and uh, the bigger pens that we are gonna be building. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and we'll show you everybody. All right, so this is who we have right now. Um, this is our boar, his name's Senor. He is a 50-50 cross of Ossipa Island hog and Mangalitsa. He looks like he's going to attack or murder your entire family, but he is the biggest sweetheart ever. Loves ear scratchies. And is just a big old sweetheart. He's about six or seven, I'm pretty sure. But if you start scratching long enough, you see the big old stretch coming out. And then these are our girls. This is Amber and this is Tally. These are both Hereford gilts. Um, this is their first breeding cycle. Um, Tally has handled it a little bit better than Amber has. Amber, as you can see on her back, that's just from Senor getting up there and getting to it. Get off of me, stop biting me. Um, she was just recently dewormed. She has a couple issues. She's got a little bit of hitch in her giddy up. Um, unfortunately, if she doesn't end up producing soon, she'll more than likely end up in the cooler just because we are trying to do more of a production farm style and we don't love freeloaders. So, um, we are expecting piglets in August and September. Um, so that's not exactly the prime time for them, but you know what? It's our first year doing it, so we will figure it out as we go along. So the way this paddock is set up, it's an L-shaped paddock. Uh, I don't really have lengths on it. Um, it's been a while since I built it. Um, but we continue all the way down this way and it extends over in this back corner, probably another 30 feet. Um, this whole area, actually we were pretty lucky for the area we're in. We had three big old cedar trees. So as you can see, all of the end posts and a lot of the smaller posts are actually all from those trees, which was actually really nice. Um, we were able to utilize those. Um, as you can tell, we're just getting out of winter. So everything is just a straight mud pit. Um, I like to add, we give them mulch hay and we have a buddy in town that does tree work. So we get quite a bit of wood chips for them, toss it in just to build up the biomass um, of in here. Uh, we're going to be building a bigger gate so I can get a bobcat in here and start clearing it out and turning stuff over. But as you can see, they've torn it up pretty well. Um, there's quite a few low spots and they will make their own wallows. So we got one over here. We got another one next to these shelters. Um, I really like to build the shelters pretty sturdy because these animals will destroy everything you make. So... This one's a little bit, it's not weaker. This is all rough cut pine. And uh, they're pretty stout and solid. Um, they're all rebarred into the ground. So that way they're not moving anything. Um, if you guys watched my last video, you saw me put this gate and everything in. It's worked fantastic. Um, I wanted to give this area a little bit of time to grow back. Um, I am starting to see a little bit of growth coming back in. Um, but again, this was the area that this was, was at one time a horse pasture. Um, you can kind of see back there that there was quite a bit of saplings uh, growth when we bought the place. Um, and I actually came through with the tractor, cleared everything out and got it to where we can actually turn it back into pasture. Um, but last year was our first year, as you can see. They like to play with the hay as well. He's pretty fun with it, but uh, he's a bit of a goofball. But they make their net. They make nests with it. They'll take it into the shelter with them. Um, but like I said, the biggest thing is they root up this area so much that, including putting their poop in there as well, that 
it just turns to quicksand pretty damn quick. So um, before we got some heavy snows, we tossed the wood chips in. We just ended up tossing all of these uh, round bales in. Um, when they're getting ready to farrow, I'll probably toss in another one. That way the girls are able to um, build their nest with them and do all that sort of stuff. Oh, there he goes. Can I get him over? Can I get him over? Come on. No, he's not going to give it up. But he's a big baby. Um, these in his ears are his registration markers. Um, he was registered before I got him. Um, so he's registered both 50-50, Ospa, Mangalitsa. These girls could have been registered. Um, the farm that I got them from, they do have registered stock. But uh, they just decided not to. A little piggy face there. Nope, nope, nope. Don't bite it. We're just showing you off. Um, I really love these Herefords. They are built like freaking tanks. The shoulders on them are fantastic. They got good loins. But they also just put on really good fat cover. And they're just solid animals. Um, yeah, no, these guys are great. Um, I will probably continue raising this breed for a very long time. Um, we are in the process now of implanting a little Dr. Moreau action. Um, adding in the Mangalitsa and the Asaba. The Asaba, they just have fantastic food conversion. Um, and the Mangalitsas can pretty much survive anywhere. These girls did a great job over the winter here. I mean, we had a couple of weeks of in the teens to like negative numbers up here. They just hunkered down in the shelter and they were good. They did a great job, but um, we are more than likely gonna be doing some winter piglets as well. So raising pigs through the winter. So I really wanted something that had a bit, bit of a better coat on it, more of a lard producing pig that might be actually gaining more in the winter as opposed to just kind of feeding it to keep weight on it so we're in the process of figuring that out again this is my first year breeding pigs and it has been an interesting year so far managing heat cycles and trying to time everything out in a way um to make it work so i'm going to take you guys into this back paddock and kind of show you what's going on in the future of these pens all right so we're in this back paddock now um like I said, we got a little bit of growth coming back. They've been out of here for probably about a week and a half now. They didn't spend much time in here over the winter. Um, I had electric running through there uh, to separate this pen. But, oh, I mean, over the winter, we were getting two-foot storms, so they were able to walk over it if they wanted to. But because of the snow, they stayed off this pretty well. Um, but as you can see, there's quite a bit of manure in here that needs to get turned in. But, um, but as I built this last year, we had a mulch bale that was real bad. So I spread that in here again, there's, there's still a seed bank in there. There's still a seed bank in the ground really, but, um, I'm hoping that we can bring this up a little bit. As you can see, this is the jankiest electric setup you've probably ever seen, um, at one time, all of these paddocks were on their own zone. So I could turn on this paddock over here and also have this one on, but not have the separator on or vice versa. I, it was pretty versatile how I could do it. The problem with that is it gets confusing, especially when you're starting to look for grounds, where you're starting to look for where am I losing power? Um, I will be honest at the moment, my fence is not very powerful. We do have, we have some storm damage back here on the cow pasture. Um, our next project that we're doing is actually going through, taking all these T-posts out, taking all this electric down all the way around. And it's gonna go, there's a corner post over there that you probably can't see through the trees. Um, and we're going to bring it all the way over to this corner. 
So that's a good space that we're uh, going to be woven wiring in. We're also going to run electric in that too because I don't trust pigs as far as I can throw them. So, but our main go goal overall, overall, sorry folks, our main goal overall is to basically break this paddock into probably three different smaller paddocks and start rotating pigs through it. Um, again, you can kind of see where the trees were over there. Um, we've been having cows on this the past couple of years and it has actually been coming up better. Um, the first year we had them in here, there really wasn't much growth when it came to grazing area. So the hope overall is moving pigs across it is really going to start turning over that soil. We're going to bring in some more topsoil, add that to it, probably some more wood chips and everything, just to allow everything to kind of roll through, build up that um, biomass in the ground. Um, and my thought is, I don't know if it's going to happen this year, but it will happen next year if it doesn't this year, is that we will also be putting chickens behind them. Really kind of do a rotational grazing cycle to really bring the like this pasture back to what it was um i hear stories from people who have lived in this area a long time that are saying that they would be getting six seven hundred bales off this whole field and this section was the designated horse pasture i find horseshoes in here all the time the pigs root them up and some of them are super old um but we're really looking to get this back to what it used to be and that way come springtime next year once the before the pigs go out on it i'll be able to put the cows on there first have them have some really good pasture ground before we put them out onto the rest of the pastures um yeah nope that's kind of what we're doing so far so kind of put that in the back of your head we are going to be doing some pretty extensive fencing videos more than likely it'll be broken up quite a bit um, we'll do a woven wire episode again. Um, that first one I did was just kind of a test run to see how filming outside would be and how that works and how that's going. Um, but we'll probably break it down, to do a woven wire video. We'll do an electric fencing video and just kind of keep you guys in the loop as we do stuff. Um, I hope this audio is all right. It's kind of cold, windy, and drizzly out, but uh wanted to get another video out to you guys i only got one out last week i was looking to get two but life's crazy so um we're gonna pop you off we'll bring you back over to the front i'll show you a couple of those horseshoes that we ended up finding out here um and we'll see you in a second this is another thing i wanted to show you guys um this is how we water our pigs it's just a normal plastic 50 gallon drum we fill it um and I'm sure you guys have seen these before. They're the pig nipples. It's just like giant hamsters. The one thing I did different than a lot of people, I've seen a ton of videos of people melting the plastic around the PVC and doing this, that, and the other. So this is just a half inch nipple, um, but you can buy these bungs on Amazon. Usually if you're buying these, these are going to be in the um, suggested people buy. These are fantastic. Basically, you just put in, I think it was a one inch hole. So this is, you can pull it out. This is three quarter inch PVC with a fitting um, with a half inch adapter on it. So you can put that back in. I actually went on the inside and put some screws on the end of the PVC. They will pull this out. But that is the nice thing is once you have that, you can pull it out. They're not really going to worry about it. I usually just come through once a week, push everything back in. Um, and they have all the water they want. Um, I was actually really surprised how this did over the winter. We had a couple of really, really, really cold weeks. Like I said, um, I ran a 100 gallon um, livestock water heater in this. Just tossed it in ran a extension cord um the only issue i would have every now and then is again if it was really cold and windy i'd have to come through with a blowtorch and melt all this but as soon as i melted it they would get on it and keep it um thought out um again usually usually one would be frozen 
um, and they would like go to one more than the other. So the one that just didn't get used more usually got froze up pretty well. Um, it's kind of nice to strap it, strap it in because they will knock it over. Pigs are just crazy strong. It shocks me every day how strong they actually are. Um, but yeah, so that's our water setup. I suggest this for everyone. We're going to be building a couple more. I've got another another one over there that needs to be repaired. That's just a water transport. Um, but yeah. So actually, while I still have you on again, again, ignore how gross this is. It's springtime in New Hampshire in a pig pen. So All right, so this is what I call the kill box. In my opinion, this is one of the most important things I actually built in this setup. Um, it was kind of an afterthought as I was building, and now I'll never build a setup without something like this. Um, it's, I think it's 12 by 12, I think is the span of it. We've got an eight foot gate here. So that way I can just back trailers down right in here we can get that gate open get everything corralled in really nice um and this i use it for my own pigs i use it for customers pigs um, when they're being processed um but everything that goes into this main setup comes in here first same thing with everything that goes out there's a small gate right here that we built there's a latch on the inside i use broken extension cords to extend um, electric lines. So like this right here, there was a gap where the gate was, where I wasn't gonna be able to run electric all the way up. You can take the, actually, I can show you right here. So you can take these gate, electric gate holders. These, you can find them at any track supply, any farm store. These are just to extend. I have this one connected at the bottom of this gate, just so nothing's pushing on the gate. Um, but I hook these right up to just a single wire in the extension cord, and I'm able to have something flexible that I can handle that can go around things. So I'm not have to worry about anything grounding out. Um, so we'll put this back. This pen is set up for electric because I also use this as my training pen for piglets just to get them trained on electric. That way, when I'm tossing them into the main pen, they're already trained because they've already been in here. Um, but the biggest thing about this is, this is where, again, I'll do customer's pig, but I also do all my own for processing. So let's see if I can kind of show you the setup on this. What's really nice is if you've ever done, like slaughtered your own pigs, um, I know me and jo uh, me and Josh from the Renegade Butcher podcast have talked about it extensively multiple times. Pigs are a little tough to get where you need them to go, um, especially if you're looking for that kill shot. And you really want to make sure that you get a single kill shot because you don't want to hear what happens after that. So what's nice about this is this is a small enough area that they're able to just kind of move around. So we put, you can see this over here. This is just an eight foot livest or livestock gate that we zip tied a stall mat to. And what's really nice is you can let the animal in, you can let them sniff around on their own. And all you have to do is come around. They'll be over in this area right here. And you can just close this in on them and push them right there. So by the time they realize they're already in something, it's already too late. They're not gonna be able to push out. They can't see out through the stall mats. So you don't have to worry about that. And it's also a little bit of cushion. So if they are thrashing around or doing something, they're not gonna hurt themselves. It has been the single biggest improvement I have done to this setup, and it is absolutely incredible. If you are planning on doing your own pork processing or even medication, anything like that, that is awesome because they're not really gonna fight it very much just because they're compact in there and they don't really know what to do. Um, but like I said, that has been a huge change. Um, and again, I, if you are serious about keeping pigs, serious about processing pigs, 
that is something that you should absolutely look into. It wasn't that much. We had this gate lying around. Um, we had the stall mat lying around. I think all I bought was actually the zip ties. Um, so, but again, along with anything here, it's an investment. But uh, yeah, so let's see if there's anything else for me to show you. All right, kids. So we moved into the barn for the end of this video. I just wanted to show you um, a little bit of this watering setup. So this is everything that goes into the barrel. Um, I make them about a foot long. Again, it's just easier. They can pull it out a little bit. As you can see, I run a screw through it. So that way, once it gets to the edge of the barrel, they can't pull it all the way out because they will. Um, I've lost a couple of them already to that. Um, these are the little bungs you can get. You can toss them right in. As you can see over time, they do start to wear down. Um, these are cheap enough though that they work really well. So this just slides on that after this is already in the barrel and that creates a pretty tight seal that you don't really have to worry about. Again, it's all maintenance. When you get something like a pig that they literally just destroy, that's it's the name of the game. So you're always gonna be replacing something. You're always gonna be re rebuilding something, but if it was easy, everyone would do it. Um, I did just wanna show you the nipple itself out of it. So you can actually clean these and pull them apart. This was a broken one, um, but you can untwist the back of this and so there's a spring inside there and that little metal piece comes out so you can see all the way through that toss that back in clean out all the gunk as you can see it, they do build up a little bit of gunk in wear so rocks and things like that will get back in it so toss all those back in together push that in you can also adjust how much resistance you want um, for how much water you want to come out. I usually just jam it all the way back um, to really have it so they have to work to get the water out because if you don't, it's gonna leak a little bit more. Um, and yeah, no, it's just easier. They can figure it out, they'll do it. Um, Senor Arbor, he had, had nip he had used nipples at one point in his life at the farm that I got him from was not using the nipples um and he figured it out within a week um all i did was i put a water bowl directly underneath one of the nipples filled it for a couple days and then just didn't um and especially watching the girls because they've been on them since they were piglets um he figured it out within a week and a half possibly two weeks um, a little bit of a pro tip with these especially if you've got piglets um, again, put the water bowl directly underneath the nipples where you want them to go. But another good trick is take peanut butter and just smear it right here. And it's peanut butter. They're going to try and come and figure out what it is. And all of a sudden they're going to go, Hey, there's water coming out of here. Um, another thing I wanted to show. So this is their feed that I use. I just use just a generic sow performance. Um, we also have some cracked corn in there for a couple extra calories for these three pigs. I'll usually do, uh, slightly a little bit over a half a, um, five gallon bucket and I'll split it between the three of them. They have three separate water, uh, bowls. Um, and when it comes to the feeders, I'll basically do this and I'll also add some soy meal to it. Not a ton. Um, but just enough that they are getting a little extra protein. Um, and with our feeders, we'll also, we have a handful of farms around here that do raw milk. So because of the law where it comes to raw milk, at least up here, they have to empty out their vats every three days. Um, so if you've got a dairy farm around you, I don't know the laws everywhere, but if you've got a dairy farm around you, you can usually get five gallon buckets of raw milk for five bucks a barrel like and it that'll fatten up a pig really well um we were probably getting at least 10 gallons a week for the majority of the summer last year and it worked fantastic um really put good marbling on them it's good protein for them um another cool thing we'll show you real quick 
I like kind of reusing stuff. So we'll toss this here. If you're running out of grain bins and you don't want to use like a barrel or something like that, which we have a ton of, but especially where you're pre, like I'm pre-mixing what this is, is this is just an old chest freezer. Um, I had it for something, I forget what it was, but we cut the lid off because it was falling apart. Pop the vise on there and it holds probably close to, what was this? This was eight bags of the um, pig grower and like the performance sow. And then probably about two bags of corn and one bag of uh, soy, if you put the soy in this mix. Um, and it holds really well. I haven't had any issues with rodents or anything getting into it. And what's nice is it's also a little bit of a workspace. Um, it's a bit of a mess in here. Just, I mean, running around doing everything. Um, but, yeah. So that's our pig setup. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we are probably going to be doing a shop walkthrough as well this week. So look for that video coming out later in the week. Uh, thanks, guys. We'll talk to you later.